this. Get almost in the book of uh, John chapter 3. Amen. Can we have that one quickly, please? I just want to go there quickly so that I can continue from there. He said that now there was a man in, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of a Jewish synagogue or ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher of the law or you are a teacher who has come from God. No one could do or no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God is not with him. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say this. In reply, Jesus declares, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Go back to what Nicodemus said. I will show you something here. He, said, he says this. He says, can, can we go back to uh, verse 2, please, quickly? He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. So you are a teacher who do not come from God. Hallelujah. People who teach things that are not from God. Amen. Some of us have been victims of those things. Amen. He said, for no one, come, no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing. If God were not with him. Hallelujah. And look at the answer from Jesus himself. Jesus said, in reply, in reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. And I also make us to understand that we can see the kingdom of God. Amen. I didn't hear a lot of amen. You know, one of the things that I, I want to discuss with us this morning uh, briefly is about our identity in Christ. You know, this, this identity in Christ comes from our salvation. Amen? If you are given your life to Jesus and you are born again, you see, this is what Jesus said that you can do or what can happen into your life or how you can operate. Amen? It says that, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. So it is given to us who are born again to see the kingdom of God. It is given to us who are born again to experience, you know, the, another dimension. Amen? I'm going to go, go continue, please, quickly. And he says that he, it's, not, it's not too quick this morning at the back there. I don't know why. Yeah, you need to be quicker than that. But how can a man be born when he is old? old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time in his mother's womb to be born. Yes? Jesus replied, I'll tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and spirit. And the spirit. Flesh give birth to flesh. And what? Hallelujah. Go back to the previous scripture, please, quickly. It says this. The previous scripture, so it should be five, verse five. It says, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Verse four, please. I'm reading. In verse four, it says, how can a man be born again? When he's old, Nicodemus asked, surely he cannot what? He cannot do what? And look at the answer from Jesus. Let's read together. No one can do what? Nicodemus say what? How can somebody enter the, his mother's womb? Isn't it? Jesus is good. Hallelujah. He said in the previous words that no one can see. Here now, Nicodemus, the question of Nicodemus, uh, how can you see the kingdom? Is Jesus answered that no one can see the kingdom unless he's born again. No one can enter the kingdom. Hallelujah. So, apostles explained those things to us. That you can enter, you can see the kingdom 
while you're on earth, and you can enter the kingdom while you're on earth. And so, which means you can experience the kingdom. Hallelujah. As a child of God, we can experience the kingdom. We can see the power of the kingdom unto resurrection. Amen? And it is what Jesus has given us as believers. And it is, it is, it is, it is our, our right, our birthright, as everyone has birthright. Amen? If you're born in a family, you have a birthright. Isn't it? Yes? When the parent passed away, they will leave an heritage, isn't it? Or inheritance. You see? And that inheritance that is left, it is for you because of your birthright. Do we agree? So, it is the same with Christ Jesus. When he died, hallelujah, he left a birthright for us. He left, he left an inheritance for us. Amen? And that inheritance, apostles, you know, taught us before, you know, salvation is a total package. Amen? Salvation is a total package in a sense that he has every, you have everything in it. Amen? So that birthright that we have, it is the manifestation of the power of God. Amen? And you will see that when you go through the scripture and you look at the life of the people who were before us, you will find out that they manifested that birthright. Amen? So, as believers, we need also to manifest that birthright. Amen? Amen? I will show you a few things this morning. Okay, let's go to the scriptures. One other thing that, you know, it was teaching us is that every, you know, was a uh, doctrine. There's quite a lot of doctrine that Jesus taught. And the things that we saw during the convention it is that we need to come to the house of God so that we teach us his ways. Yes? So we are teaching the ways of God. Now, there's one thing that you need to understand with Christ Jesus. When he speaks, he speaks, he, you know, he speaks the language of God. Amen? And as we are born again, we need to speak the language of God. Now, when you read that book of, of John, you know, chapter 3, when you go further, you find out that uh, John the Baptist says something, you know, which is eye-catching. Go to uh, verse 34. Now, when we are born again, what happened? Let me tell you for some of us who do not know. When you are born again, you know, God comes and lives in you with the Holy Spirit. And God lives in you. Amen? So you have the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Amen? Hallelujah. How many of you are born again here? Look right, left. How many of you are born again? If somebody is not lifting his hand, let me know so that we can pray. You know, because there are benefits in being born again. Amen? So we are all born again. It's for the one, the one whom God has sent. The one who God has sent speaks the word of God. For God what? I want us to read that again. I have a problem. The Bible says God give a spirit without limit. So if God give a spirit without limit, it means that we who are children of God, who have received, you remember what I told you, our inheritance is in Christ. So we have received that spirit. And the Bible says it is without limits. So when you look at the scriptures, and when you look at the New Testament, you know, particularly that we're talking about here, you find out that all those who have gone before us, you know, have manifested the spirits without limits. Amen? So what is going on that in our life we cannot manifest the spirit without limits, some of us? What is, what, what, what is the issue that, look, Something is happening in my life. And God said that, as because I'm born again, I'm his child. And he has given me the spirit without limit. The spirit that can show me everything. The spirit that can reveal to me everything. The spirit that, that can make me to, to overcome every battle of life. Amen? So, what is making me not to overcome that battle of life? Hallelujah. 
it is what we want to, you know, explore for a few minutes. Because you will find out that in the scriptures, when Jesus was with the apostles, he was doing everything, isn't it? And, you know, they were riding on that grace of Christ, you know? And when Jesus sent them in the book of Luke chapter 9 and chapter 10, we found out that they were able to manifest in that power. But after that, we did not see anything happening, isn't it? Are you with me here this morning? To the point that Christ Jesus himself, did, you know, when they brought somebody to, to them, they, they were not able to cast out that, that demon in a, in a boy. So God, Jesus said that it is because of your faith. Hallelujah. God is saying something here to us this morning. He has given us a power that is limitless. Amen. He has not put a limit in the power of, of God into our lives. Amen. So we need to manifest in that power. And it takes somebody who has a relationship with Christ to manifest in that power. Amen. Let me... <laughs> you know, my glasses to see far is not to read. So I will be taking up and downs. Bear with me. You know, God said something. He said, in the last day in the book of Acts, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yes? Look. Can we have that, please, in the book of Acts? Quickly, please. It says, chapter 2. In the last day, verse 17, please. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. It says, in the last day, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Or all people, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vision and your old men will dream dreams. Mm -hmm. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire in, and billows of smoke. So, which means that God, you know, as he has given us the spirit, as we are born again, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to do everything or to know everything and to walk in everything. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, so we have the ability to produce fruit. Fruit that lasts. Amen? You see? A fruit... Fruit grows from a tree, isn't it? And that tree has branches. And Jesus said that if a branch does not produce fruit, it will do what? It will do what? Now, as a child of God, we need to produce fruit. Do we agree? We need to produce fruit. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. Amen. You know, yesterday we were discussing at home, and my son asked me a question. He said, he said this. The question that he has, he says, um, in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8, he said, what does he mean that... Um, the creation eagerly desire the manifestation of the sons of God. So the creation, what? Wait in eager expectation. There's an expectation from this word. You know, for the sons of God to be revealed. Can we have your other version? You know, the radical one. Hallelujah. It says, for the earnest expectation. So there's an expectation from us that the creation requires. Are you getting in this morning? You know our Christianity is not about the car that you drive, the house that you live in. You see? You know, the makeup that you make in the morning, your hair that you do. Hallelujah. That hides all the white ones. Hallelujah. It is not about that. It is more than that. You know, when the man of God was preaching to us during the convention, he says something. The light that we carry is not only for the church. Hallelujah. 
It is also for the outside. It's also for our community, our brothers and sisters who are not born again. Because the Bible says the creation eagerly desire the manifestation of the sons of God. And you cannot manifest unless you are born again. Do we agree that? That's, it can be elementary for some of you, but it is, what, it is how you can discover who you are in Christ. Some of our children, you know, last Sunday I believe we were discussing upstairs there, you know, and one of the things that we, we brought out is that how, are, who are we in Christ? The identity, you know, because some of our children are born in a Christian home, they grow up in a Christian home, all they know it is church, all they know it is to come to church, and after that, when they go to uni, some of them become something else. Because we have not given them the opportunity to, to, to discuss and tell them the dangers of what they're going to encounter in, you know, when, when they are out there alone. Amen? So, the Bible says that the creation, because they will tell you things, man, that look, but I was there and the son of the, you know, I know somebody who's the son of the pastor who's doing these things. And how can, how can it be possible? You see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So, to let us know that, look, God in his, his infinite mercy, amen, has given us all that we need for life and godliness. And at that, that godliness part is what I want to emphasize in this morning. Because the apostle was t- telling us that, look, this year is the year of transformation. Amen. Now, this is it. We cannot live our lives and things will happen to us, and they are still happening to us, and we are still lamenting. You see, you will see, I will show you in a few minutes now, because of time, in the scriptures, the people who were before us, amen, how they were able to walk in the power of God. You see, so the, eager, the creation eagerly desired a manifestation of waiting for the earnest expectation of, of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yes? So, the creation is waiting for you and I. Uh, some of you, I don't even know if you are here. Are we all here this morning? You see, when our Father and the Lord comes here and preach to us and say things about how God speaks to him, how he hears God, how, you know, God does things through him. Amen we should also be at that place. Amen? Amen. Not everyone agrees with me. Some of us, we just want to come to church on Sunday, and that's it. No, that's, that's not a Christian life. You know, one of the things that he said last Sunday is that when you are born again, it is a long life journey. Amen? Amen. And that, in that long life journey, you need to leave your mark. Not out of pride or out of arrogance. No. No, it's not what we're talking about here. But out of who God has made you to be. Amen. You know, one of the things that we, we one of the answers that we gave to our son is that, you know, creation, those who are in the occult can use creation. Yes? They can use a bird and put witchcraft in the bird to go and kill somebody. Yes? Yes, (laughs) (laughs) Hallelujah. The administrators are here, though. So we let them know that we need coffee in New Cross. You see? Why? You know, you know, what I was saying is that creation can be used the evil one used creation to create havoc. To hinder the life of people. You know? And to do evil. But there's something that you sang, we sang together this morning in that song, the last one that we, we, we sang. You know, it is what, where we are at as children of God. Creation cannot u- be used against us. No, 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 no. Somebody is not listening to me this morning. I say, creation cannot be used against you. You know, because the power has been given to you and I, you know, to dictate what creation should be. 
when our father-in-law comes and says that I went to a crusade and it was raining and I said to the rain to stop, how do, how do you feel? It's creation, isn't it? And it is that same God that lives in you that lives in him. Hallelujah. So if that same God that lives in him that lived in us, what is wrong with us that we cannot operate the way he operates? That's the question. You know, on, 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 on one, of, one of the answers that he gave to that question that I just asked us is this. On Friday when we were watching, he said that he does something, you know. He's not moved by, by um, things of the world, yes? Or he does not, he does not judge by... Uh, how do you say the word in English? Pastor, help us. So that you will translate. Pastor said that she said in French so that we translate. Hallelujah. You know? You know, it does, it does not judge by the um, opinion of man. Amen? And if you see the life of Jesus, that's the same lifestyle that Jesus was living. Amen? If you see the life of the apostles, that's the same lifestyle that they were living. Amen? So it is us as well that because creation cannot, you know, they cannot call your name in the realm of darkness. And, you know, even if you respond, something will happen. Nothing can happen to you. Amen? Amen. You know, you cannot eat in a dream and wake up and say that, oh, you are eating in a dream. No, 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 no. It's because you don't read a lot of scriptures. It's the reason why you ate in a dream. That's the first thing. But nothing will happen to you. No, no. Some of you do not understand what I'm saying. The power that we carry is what I'm talking about. You know, power to see, power to know. How can I go to somebody's naming and God reveal the name and the destiny of a person to me? Hallelujah. And I go and I give a name and the parents attest of that name that they have chosen. Amen. Amen. Because we need to copy our father in the Lord. He said that when he goes to naming, he has to pray. And the Lord will reveal things concerning the person to us. So God speaks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, you, we need to experience the kingdom. Every one of us, we need to experience the kingdom. Our testimony is good. Yes, the Lord did this to me. He gave me a job. The Lord gave me this. The Lord did this. No, but we want now to say, the Lord, I was walking in the street and I saw somebody before me. And the Lord told me that that guy is a Muslim. So speak to him because I have need of him today. God, God, God speaks. And I know that God has told some of you before. But you shy the way. Hallelujah. But we will not shy away anymore. Amen. You know, God, God was telling me this morning that, look, we, we do not know, you know, or we do not... We do not, um, I, I won't say understand, but because we understand who we are in Christ, isn't it? But we do not um, have the full understanding, you see, of what we carry as power. You know, in that book of John 3, it says that it, God, John 3, yeah, verse 34 that we read. I believe, yes. He said the power that we carry has no limits. So, if we carry a power that has no limit and the scheme of man according to the song that we sang, you see? He said no scheme of man, no power of hell can take me out of Christianity. Amen? Amen? Because the son asked a question. He said, he said, what question was it again? What is, um, what is the sin that God cannot forgive? It's what he asked me yesterday. What is the sin that can, God cannot forgive? And a sin that will, you know, I told him it's the sin against the Holy Spirit. That's the only thing that God cannot forgive. And he said it to the Pharisees. When they are arguing with him, he does this by the power of Beelzebul. He said, you can sin against everything, but the sin of the Holy Ghost, against the Holy Spirit, I will not forgive that. Jesus, God said that. So, you know, so which means that, is it, is it, yeah, he it says, can, you know, no power of hell, no scheme of man,
can ever pluck me from his end. So when the power of hell uses creation, can be a man, your husband or your wife or your children against you. The Bible says that there's no power of hell, no scheme of man that can ever pluck you out of the hand of God. Meaning that there's nothing that they can do that can overcome you. Why? Because you are a child of God, full of the spirit of God that is upon you. That, that spirit of God, all you have to do it is to stand your ground. Tell somebody, stand your ground. And as you stand your ground and you declare, because Jesus said, declare a thing and it shall be. Hallelujah. So what we need to do as, you know, as a child of God, filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit living in us, it is to declare whatever you face opposition. Amen. Whenever you face opposition, when you declare, God will back it up. Amen. Amen. You know, you don't cry. Don't cry. Apostle tell us here, why, 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 why a situation come, your child is misbehaving and you are crying? Don't cry. He told us that, look, one first thing, don't worry yourself so that you will not have hard blood pressure. Look, I told my wife, a child misbehave uh, or somebody misbehave, I will never worry. You know? Because if I worry, I will have blood pressure. And I don't want to have blood pressure. Hallelujah. Because my worrying, is it going to st st stop? Somebody is in this place this morning. You know? Because yesterday, on Friday, we prayed by the Spirit. You know, a Christian should not be depressed. A Christian should not be stressed. Why? Because of the limitless of the spirit of God that lives in us. That as a child of God, I can declare a thing and it will be. So when things are happening to me, what I do, I declare. I stand my ground against Satan. You know, because I know that he can use creation. So the person that is momentarily, uh, momentarily re. Let's pastor pronounce it. Momentarily. Momentarily. You know, when it, comes, when it comes to, you know, correcting us with our accent, our children are good at that. Isn't it? Does it happen to you before? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. So, mo, you, know, you know, because the creation or Satan has suggested something to that person that he has been used at that particular time. You know? So it shouldn't give you headache. Neither shall you give you blood pressure. Hallelujah. What you say, you say, it is written. It is written. When you say it is written, it settles it. Because Jesus said that my word will not come to me void. Without accomplishing the purpose for which he has been sent. So every word that you send when you face opposition, there is a purpose for it. And the purpose is to give you victory. And the purpose is to make you free. Hallelujah. Amen. It is what the Lord is telling us this morning. Look, now enough it is now. You know why? We need to experience the kingdom. Amen. The creation desire me to manifest. Hallelujah. And, 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 and it is what we are aiming for. Amen. You know, this morning when we were admonishing us uh, upstairs this morning, pastor was saying this. I, I came and I caught them speaking. And he said this, you know, read the scriptures until it gets into your bones. Hallelujah. Read, 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 read. Amen. Because when you read and you study the scriptures, when you are washing your dishes, you, the Lord will bring a scripture to you and it will take you to a place of meditation for the solution that you are looking for, the thing that you are praying for. Hallelujah. It is, through the, it, it, it is how it works. Amen. Or when you are, you know, you know, when you read the scripture and it's full in your bone, uh, you know, you, you will be able, you know, to, to, to quote a scripture and God will back it up. But there's something that makes us not to enter into that realm is offense. 
It is unforgiveness. How many of you here have never been offended? Hallelujah. Jesus said that offense will come. You see, my time is up. Hallelujah. But let me tell you this. You know, it is all those things that... It is all those things that... um, Put the veil before us. Amen. You know, one of the things that Apostle has been teaching us, I'm I'm rolling up now. One of the things that Apostle has been teaching us is that we should not let Satan deceive us. Amen. And as believers, we need to bear fruit. Amen. Because in the book of Corinthians, when he spoke about how Eve was deceived out of a pure devotion. So which means that we can be deceived though we are devoted to God sometime. And that comes from our unforgiveness that is still in us. Because we have been offended. And Satan used that to hinder us to move in a level of faith that God has ordained for our lives. You see? You are a carrier of the power of God. We, I am as well. I should not exclude myself. So as such, you know, we are the one to see the kingdom. We are are the one to walk in the power of the kingdom. Give me uh, chapter 62 of Isaiah, I want to finish there. We are the one. So I need to, my glasses because I want to see your faces. Amen. We are the one who have the power to undo things on this earth. You see what is happening in our country? Look, I was, I was, I was reading the scriptures. You remember when we studied in Isaiah? In Isaiah, the Bible says something. Uh, I think it's Isaiah chapter 2. Let me, let me give you this quickly. In that Isaiah, it says that the, your young men will oppress you. Yes? Chapter 1, isn't it? Let, let me get my scripture right. And your women will rule over you. A country that forgets God. You know? It's not, it's not, it's not um, what do you call that? Pastor is laughing already. I haven't even spoken. He knows what I'm going to tell about. You know, a, a country that wants to forget about God. He may, not that a woman cannot rule. Yes, it need to be clear, you know. We need to agree. Women can rule. But when the women are ruling all over the place, there's a problem in the nation. The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is a the head of state of a nation is a, the prime minister of, um, no, Germany. I'm not talking, I'm talking about United Kingdom, where we are. Or Scotland is a, the one in Ireland is a, it's Wales only. You know what? I asked God, what is this going on here? I will show you the scripture in a minute. There's something that is going on. It's because of us. Not that man cannot rule. Or man should not rule. Or not that women are inferior. No. You need to understand. There are, yeah, there are spiritual principles that God has set. Amen? Let me get you the scripture, please. So that you will understand what I'm talking about here. In chapter... Yeah, chapter 3, verse 12. You will... Youth, youths oppress my people. Women rule over them. On my people, your guides lead you astray. They turn you from the path of, from the path. You know, so a nation that gives himself, because in that, God said that, because the nation was giving themselves, they, they abandoned God completely. This nation is a Christian nation, we know it. It's the reason why God has called us, but we need to manifest Hallelujah. Not that women do not have the capacity to rule a nation. They have. We see Germany. We see United Kingdom. 
You know, we have a woman before who ruled the nation. But when it comes to a place that everything is the women who are in charge, there is a problem. We should be a balance. Hallelujah. Do we agree? You know, the world's issue is that there was a great revival that went in that nation. It's the answer that I heard from the Holy Spirit. But what I want to, let me come back to this. So we need to be, to make sure that we manifest. Amen. How God said this. God said this, that look, Cross the Tabernacle is a divine um, call from God. Amen. That's the thing that should never get out of your mind. You know, because if that one goes to you, some have been less left um, led astray because of that, because they don't have the understanding. You need to have that understanding that we do not start crossing tabernacle because we just want apostle just wanted to start a church. No. You heard the testimony, isn't it? Time and time again. So everyone that comes in this place has a destiny to fulfill. Everyone that comes in this place has something to manifest. Hallelujah, to give to this society, this country that we live in. Why? Because Isaiah 62, quickly, please, I need to run up now. Isaiah 62, please. 62. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till a righteousness shines like the dawn, a salvation like a blazing torch. Your salvation should be a blazing torch. Ah, I say my salvation will be a blazing torch. I don't know when God speaks and some mouth are closed. God does not like it. It means that there's an issue that you are going through in your life that, you know, you don't think that the word of God that I'm speaking is for you. And I'll tell you tonight, God will set you free. Look, you need to stand your ground. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, a salvation, the church, Christ the tabernacle, shall, sh- a righteousness shall shine or shines out like what? The dawn. A, a salvation like a what? A blazing torch. So, because when salvation comes, darkness is removed. It's light that comes. Hallelujah. It's that light need to shine. Your light need to shine. Say your light need to shine. My light need to shine. Say my light need to shine, my sister. Amen. Amen. Now go to verse 2. The nation will see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You see, you will be called by a new name. I will be called by a new name. He said, the nation will see your righteousness and all, the key, all kings your glory. So there's a glory that is in you and I. Amen? Amen. Young boys, young girls in the church, our school, your glory need to shine. Men and women in our workplaces, our glory need to shine. Hallelujah. Pensioners, your glory need to shine. Hallelujah. It says that you will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You have a new name. Why? Because you are born again. And that new name, give me verse Free. Where are we stop? Is that you will be a crown? I will be a crown of splendor. Have you seen a crown before? Have you seen the crown of a queen of England? You see the splendor that come out of that crown. It's nothing compared to the crown that you are. I want. I want this. I want you to have this understanding. You know, it's because as children of God, we live in two worlds. It's the reason why sometimes we are overcome by the things of this world. But it shouldn't be. Because Jesus said that, the scripture says that we are not from this world, though we live in this world. 
Hallelujah. It might be a bit difficult for some of the young ones to understand. But the Bible says that a splend- okay, you, will, you will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand. A royal diadem in the hand of your God. What brings that is our salvation. What brings that it is because we are born again. Hallelujah. And out of that splendor, out of that glory, out of that power, we need to win souls. We need to shine. Amen. Because the Bible says, arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of God has risen upon you and I. Hallelujah. So we're going to stand up this morning and we're going to pray. And a royal diadem in the hand of the Lord, of your God. Now verse 4. No longer will they call you. No longer will they call me deserted. You know, there's people identify you sometimes with kind of word, isn't it? Amen. God said that today is changing. Why? Because you are born again. Because of the power unto salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, no longer you will be called deserted or name your land or your family desolate. The Lord remove the shame today. But you will be called Hezebah. My name is Hezebah. And your land, your family will be called Bela. Why? Because for the Lord will take delight in me. I don't like the way that we read it. You know, sometimes we need to say those things loud. Shout it. You know, everything that they are saying that you are not depressed. Depression, I know that it can happen. Situation can be dire and, you know. But God has set you free. And I want us to read this thing again because... Some, don't be intimidated. When you read and you are intimidated, it means that there's something wrong. Satan is still oppressing you. I don't want you, anyone to be oppressed. No one can be oppressed in this church. You cannot be an apostle, A.T.B. William, and be oppressed. It is not possible. Hallelujah. If you are, you know, there's something, if you, 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 you are, take a step. Just let it play in your house. Let it play where you are going. Play, 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 play. You will see, it will go. I'm telling you the divine truth. We have testimony upon testimony of people who have had those kind of issues. But they say that, oh, I just put your tape on my thing and this thing vanished from my life. Hallelujah. So you're going to read this one like you shout, you don't care about anybody. Can I use that word, sir? You see? You don't, you don't mind about anybody. You read it. Hallelujah. So that it will resound into your spirit and the you will see that you will be set free. Whoever, whoever is in this place. Hallelujah. So that when you come out of this place, you know who you are in God. Amen. So let's read it. Put your name there. Will I be this? Oh, my name. I will call Exeba. The land for the Lord. You see, you see, you see, when we were reading, I didn't hear a lot of voices. I heard about Dickiness' voice and few voices. But at the back there, I did not hear any one voice. I didn't hear Dickiness' voice at the back there. There's a lot of Dickinesses there. So I didn't hear some Dickiness at the back there. So I want you, I want us to read it again. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's declare this into our lives. One, two, let's go. No longer will they call me deserted on my name of the name of a desolate but for the let the bell for the Lord will take his delight in me. Hallelujah. Shout a joy. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's just give thanks to God. Let's just thank him today, O oh God. Because what salvation has brought us, what salvation has done for us. What salvation has brought us, oh God of glory and mercy, we thank you. We bless your holy name, oh God. Because, oh God, you change our name. You change our identity. 
Oh God of great mercy, we not remain the same anymore. For that which you have done, oh God, today. Yes, Lord God, depression is no more in our lives. Yes, Lord, anxiety is no more, oh God. Every fight, oh God, is yours, oh God. Yes, Lord, we bless your holy name. Yes, Lord, we bless your holy name. Yes, Lord, my life will never be called deserted again. My name changed from today. Ah, God of glory and mercy. Yes, Lord, God, I am a delight, oh God of the Lord, in the hand of the Lord. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we give you glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. My God and King, my God and King, my God and King. Yes, Lord. I will manifest the God by the power of your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, God of great mercy. My Jesus. Oh, God. Father, 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 say Kerea Basanta Rabakaene. Delight, O God. Yes, Lord. My salvation, O God. My salvation, O God. Make me into a blazing fire. A blazing fire. A blazing fire. Yes, Lord. A blazing fire. Casa tarabakayene kosonto rokoyene. Rese tereyabakayene kosonto rokoyene. Oh Lord, Father, kese tereyabakayene. Merciful God, Father. Bless your holy name, God. For who we are in you. Thank you for being at the center of it all, God. We bless your holy name this morning. And our life will never be intimidated, will not be intimidated by anything anymore. Amen. For it is written, Who are you, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? Amen. Salvation has given us power without limits. And we have seen it in the life of the apostles. They said, silver and gold, we do not have. But what we have is the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus. Be at the center of our lives. Be at the center of every family in Christ Tabernacle. That your grace and your mercy will not cease in our homes. That our children will not go astray, O God. That our wives, O God, of great mercy, will be the crown in our homes. Our husbands, O God, will be head according to your word with a direction, O God. And Lord God, we thank you for the life of your servant, the apostle. And we thank you, Jesus, that we know that our hope is in no one but you. 
and help us to God in this year's transformation of God to produce fruit. Fruit that will, which will last to God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name.